Wow. And so you would pick Adam over Dennis, Rob, and David. Interesting. In this little universe that you and I live in right now where I'm not <laughs> married and none of those four people are married, yes, I'm going with Adam. <laughs> Well, and thank you for not, not saying, well, of course, it would have to be my husband. I appreciate that you went outside the box on this one. <laughs> it, 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 do I date myself by, by admitting that I, I you know, saw you doing that show? Is, is that like a whole generation ago in some ways? Well, it kind of actually young, makes you younger because most of the people that recognize me from that show are 10 years my junior. It was you know, people like somewhere near their college aged years who are the biggest fans of it. So mm. sometimes I don't want to even date myself by saying, Yeah, that was me because I was clearly older than you if you were watching it. <laughs> <laughs> well, trust me, I'm older than you now, so I I'll, but I'll just take that for what it's worth. Um <laughs> now you often play uh roles I think that, that many actresses of your generation would, would probably kill for. Um, and I wondered, you know, what do casting agents see in you that they don't see in, in other women? Huh. If only I knew I'd replicate it on all the jobs that I don't get that I really want. <laughs> but uh, I have to admit that a lot of the times I pick the script because I've liked the all-male cast. And I like the adrenaline junkie characters and boys are really easy to get along with on set for 14 hours a day. <laughs> so I... I have a tendency to lean towards them. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's interesting that you say that. I hadn't really considered that, but most of these shows have been very uh, male-driven and not a lot of other women. I mean, so you, when, you're on, uh, when you're on screen, you are, you, you, I mean, you're the woman. The girl. You, you, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the girl, the girl, sorry. <laughs> well, no, the woman, you're right. I just meant like I garner all that attention. It's true. It's uh it's an easy place to make sure you'll be noticed. Is it is it easier to do these characters that have this kind of wild streak? Now, you know, numbers being the exception there, I think, but um Yeah, but even on numbers, she still carried a gun. I had to learn how to use a machine gun. I had to, you know, like <laughs> there were she had a PhD and she wore Prada a lot of the time, but she she was sort of a a cowboy for what she was doing as a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. So, um all of them are really fun, and they're much easier to play than a suburban housewife. It's much harder to make drama out of nothing. <laughs> I can see yeah. that. I, I don't see you doing um, like Sophie's Choice. I don't mean to. You know, I, <laughs> well, we could only hope. Sophie's Choice is actually interesting because. I saw it much later than when it came out, and mm-hmm. Peter McNichol's performance in it is the reason why I asked the producers on Numbers if uh, Peter McNichol could be my love interest. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, did you know Peter before then? I didn't know Peter beforehand, and when I came on the show, they had, I think, a design really to make me David Crummeltz's love interest, mm. and probably a triangle between... Um, Navi's character and David's and how that was going to play out and I went in and asked for Peter McNichol because he's he's so terrific in that movie and pretty much everything else he's ever done that I thought he would just make me a better actor hmm. and uh, quite he, he certainly demonstrated a, a knack for eccentricity on uh, Ally McBeal ahead of that so we certainly <laughs> yeah. knew you know you certainly know what you're getting into there <laughs> yes <laughs> um now, so I asked you that, but I'm also thinking, um, from what I understand, and you know, I mean, this is the first time we've ever spoken, so if I have this wrong, you just tell me. But from what I understand, you you left uh, Rescue Me, and I think Numbers for what I understood to be family reasons, and and I wondered if if the, if if a willingness to choose family over career at this point in your career would make hes- uh, producers a little more hesitant to cast you in like long term projects. Hmm, interesting questions. I did leave both of them um, mostly for family reasons. The, I left Rescue Me to uh, further pursue my relationship with my husband here in Los Angeles because that shot in New York. And mm-hmm. after two seasons with Dennis, two series with Dennis over five years, I thought I might be single forever if I kept moving every time I went on a good date to another city. Hmm. And then... Uh, at the third year of numbers, I was pregnant with twins, and a one-hour procedural 
never the ideal job when you have three kids under two years old. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of hours for 10 months out of the year. So I would think some of it may come down to how you leave a show. I gave everybody a lot of notice, and I gave them reasons that weren't like, I don't like the size of my trailer. <laughs> um, so no one was particularly upset with any of that or felt like I had quit the cult <laughs> for reasons outside of the bylines. And sadly, if you look at how hard my life is now with three kids who are still under three years old, <laughs> I won't be having any more soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, any more kids or any more jobs? <laughs> <laughs> Probably both, but uh, any more kids uh. for sure. So I, I think I'm running out of reasons to quit shows based on family needs. Got it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's interesting what you mentioned about the way that you left the shows. Uh, you never suffered uh, the slings and arrows uh, as uh, let's say someone leaving, uh, oh, I don't know, Grey's Anatomy recently did. Uh, you know, it was announced early on that you were going to depart. You had the family situation, and it was a nice clean break as those things go. Yeah, which I think everybody has to work hard on because everybody has feelings involved when you when you invest that much time into something. Were you sorry to see numbers come to an end? Or the series itself? Yeah, I guess I probably had mixed feelings. Every job, even as an actor, I think after a certain point, has the same feeling that every other kind of job has. Where you're like, okay, I'm ready to try something new. For myself, after three years of playing that character, I was ready to try something new. And I know some of those boys and a couple of the group, well, one of the girls, had been doing it for six years. <laughs> so yeah. as bad as they were, I know they were ready to try other things too, but... It's sort of like an end of an era in my career, so I did. Oh, it was it was it was nice that uh, Rob Morrow made it all the way through a series without being uh, fussy. <laughs> Remembering <laughs> Northern Exposure, that was kind of ugly. Um, <laughs> well, um, I want to come back and uh, talk to you in a minute about uh, uh, Acme Comedy. Talk to you about uh, uh, Dennis Leary, and of course uh, David Duchovny and Californication. But let's take a quick break. Um, this is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to the Mr. Media Radio interview with actress Diane Farr, who, of course, you'll recognize from Rescue Me, Numbers, Californication, and, of course, Dr. Drew. We'll be right back. <laughs> 